All right, so we are here in my house right now. I did a video like this before where I was talking about what it's like living in Russia, but unfortunately I had to leave. So now I'm going to describe kind of what life is like around over in Serbia. And um, I just wanted to say that I got a uh, couple notifications. I got a few more subscribers um, this morning, which is really cool. I actually had a three-way call with PewDiePie and Mr. Beast because they were concerned with the amount of followers that I liked and they were concerned that I was hurting their brand with the amount of views and followers that I was getting. They said I'm up to 26 now and they're really concerned about it. So I was basically talking to them and they just wanted me to sell out and I told them no, of course not. They were offering me $3 million, which I felt was way too low for this channel. And I came back with a counter offer of 130 million, but they wouldn't budge. So I think I'm just gonna stick it to them and I'm going to overtake them in the followers and views and everything like that. So anyways, let's go talk about Serbia for a second. I wanna kind of give you uh, a little tour of what my place looks like, talk about the costs, talk about just kind of like general life and everything else and how I get around. So here is um, a little tour. This is my room right here. Pretty simple room right here. Uh, right behind me I have just like a little closet. Right there, hello? This leads over into my bathroom right here. And see, this is the funny thing. I did, I forgot about this the first time I was here, but you have a couple of switches right here. So right here, you have your light. You have the water heater. Right now I have my laundry going, so I'm just gonna leave that. And then you have this little heater here on top. I'll show you in a second over here. So. Kind of just like a little basic bathroom. And this is the heater right up here that I was talking about. You need to be careful because I actually, I accidentally left it on for like six hours or something like that. And my door was kind of open, so it was just shining right down on it. I'm like, oh geez, I could probably start a fire in the house. So be careful and watch out for it. But also what's really nice too, I have this little patio comes out here. So I have a nice little park next to me. I have a few uh, little grocery stores next to me. Idea is kind of one of the main ones that I have, but also right up the hill I have um, uh, kind of a street market, which is like the main one over in Belgrade and um, a couple other stores as well. You have kind of a food section and then you have kind of like a clothes and like accessories like section as well. So this is where I do my work in the morning, right over here on the table. Have kind of a full kitchen, again, kind of like the electric uh, stovetop over here. Um, you have to turn on the switch right here to turn on the water over here because under here there's a little uh, water heater down over there. Microwave, kitchen, and it also comes with this other little mini fridge as well. I don't know why they added it, but you know, if I needed it, need the space or whatever, it's pretty cool. Yeah, have the TV over there couch, lights. I don't really spend too much time over in this section over here. This is where I just kind of lay my clothes out to dry. And then we have the door going out and that's kind of where we're going to be going next. So usually the cost for what I spend about a month, a lot of people will ask me this, I spend 400 and 20, it's 400 pounds, so about $425 for um, the rent. Utilities is probably gonna be another $75, give or take, so let's just round it up to about $500 for that. I'm probably gonna be spending roughly around $250 to $300 for food, so that brings me up to about $800. Um, other activities and costs, 
you know, I'd probably round up to another, depending on, you know, what you do, 300 to $600. And that's $600 that I'm doing a lot. I'm going out, eating out all the time, drinking out all the time, doing a lot of activities and stuff like that. So, you know, the cost could get really high, but if, you know, you're not eating out, drinking out, or doing many activities and stuff, you really don't have many other costs when it comes to it, which is really cool. So, um, yeah, I mean, basically, you know, the main things you need is just, you know, your rent and food and you're pretty much good. And obviously all your toiletry and accessories and stuff like that. So it really isn't much to live here, you know, comparatively when I was living in Seattle, you know, you're spending, you know, a few grand, you know, probably 80% of my 80, 70, 60% of my paycheck were here. You know, you're probably spending maybe 10 to 30% of your paycheck, which is really nice. So right now we'll go outside. I'll kind of show you around, show you some kind of cool stores, give people kind of an idea of what is here. One thing that I don't really like here is the food availability here and the brands and stuff like that. I kind of wish there was a little bit more variety. Um, unfortunately, there is not as much as I'd like, but you know, it's perfectly fine. You know, in this country, I'm not used to a lot of things. So there's probably things I don't even know about yet. But again, I'll go show you guys here in just a few minutes. so bright out today and it's so warm which is so nice because we basically just hit spring and it gets very hot down over here which is awesome and um the winters get a little cold a little rainy doesn't snow too much you know according to the locals but the summers and springs are definitely amazing so right now i'm gonna go over to this cafe it's right next to me I discovered it, it's this like little cool hidden spot. And I get a coffee for about, I say $1.30. It's about 180 dinars. I tip a little bit more, so let's just say 150 uh, or $1.50. Um, so I'm going to go over there, check out this little place. And a lot of people already know here right now, but for people who are just watching, you can go and you could smoke um, inside vape or smoke inside some places have will have like hookah and stuff like that but um yeah this is kind of could be an upside or a downside depending on who who's watching this um you know people might not like it or they would like it just because they kind of have that freedom there are some store or uh restaurants that do have no smoking in it but generally speaking a lot of the older shops will allow smoking inside but not grocery stores not anything like that it's generally just going to be cafes and uh bars and things like that so let's go now Uh, cappuccino, one of <laughs> The woman knows me here, so she just knows exactly why I want to get every time. Just want to get a cappuccino. So, um, yeah, right here, just like a little bar cover. So yeah, you could just watch uh, soccer, football uh here and uh what's really nice being in this time zone is because as, um we're close to a lot of where the epl the the time zones where the epl is la liga and everything else so soccer is always playing here which is really awesome so yeah you sit back get a dollar fifty coffee if you want to get a beer in the afternoon that's perfectly fine here too smoke a cigarette vape whatever you want you can have it here so usually in the morning after i eat um, do a little bit of work. I'll come here and just uh, get some coffee and then I'll kind of go out and go explore, uh, you know, a different place, record some more videos and stuff like that. And I have a lot of videos coming up right now, which I'm really excited about. So.
So I'm caffeinated up a little bit, feeling good. And uh, give a little extra tip to, uh, I think this woman is the owner of the place. She's usually the one here. There's like one other guy that's over there. So I gave her like uh, 250 just because like she's really nice. She knows what I want and everything. So I'm already known basically by name. Well, not by name, but she just recognizes my face and she instantly gets the coffee. So that's really cool. So I'm gonna go show you uh, idea which is basically like one of the main grocery store chains um, here. There's a few other ones, but Idea is kind of like more of the common one here. So I'm gonna go stop by over there and kind of show you like what a uh, grocery store looks like. It's basically like a big 7-Eleven, essentially. It's just like twice the size. It's kind of like a little mini market and uh, it has some, you know, it's just basically like a downsized grocery store. So show you kind of some of the pro uh, products and uh, yeah, we'll get over there here in a few minutes. Okay, so the rule is basically just do this in my head if you're converting to American dollars. About 100 dinar is going to equal you close to, I'd say about, i just say about 80 cents. So, 80 75 cents or something like that so when you look at the products there just multiply you know or divide by i can't even do math right now but that was just a general rule every 100 you're going to see about 70 75 cents or something like that so um, i'll show you some of the products that are over here in this grocery store mm -hmm. Nutella is very popular here. That's plasma over there. It's really like a popular, used to be just kind of like a kid's cookie, but now everybody eats it. And they put it on their pancakes and everything else. And it's very delicious. And I haven't found another country that had it yet. So it's pretty cool.
So I just had to buy some Caesar dressing for salad and uh, some eggs because I was just running low. I don't really have too much to buy, but it kind of gives you an idea of what this store looks like. It's pretty small compared to, you know, a lot of places that you'll see in America. But um, yeah, I spent about $3 just on the two, which I probably got a more expensive brand of eggs and uh, uh, the sauce is probably pretty expensive. It was probably more expensive than what the eggs were. So, yeah, you know. Again, prices here can be pretty cheap uh, depending on what you get. But if you get some more of the name brand stuff, it's going to definitely cost a little more naturally. So I have to go drop these off really quick and then I'll show you the market. And the market is definitely much more um, cheaper, but it's not open in the evenings so you have to go get them during the day and uh right now there's going to be a lot of people up there since the weekend sunday and uh yeah so we're gonna go walk up here in just a second So I have to go walk up all these stairs. It's a nice workout in the morning because basically I have to kind of go a little bit uphill to get to the city. So there's not too many hills here. Um, zoom in. Um, a little bit in Belgrade and stuff, but it's pretty flat for the most part over here. So just kind of when you get to the city center is the main one or zoom in, which is across the bridge. So. We're heading up here to the market now. Sometimes you'll see some street vendors. And you know, what I usually see is just them selling like used products. Um, nothing really good, probably some uh, knock off stuff every once in a while it's not as bad as other countries probably like india or china where they have complete knockoffs of chanel gucci and all that stuff but you can just tell that uh yeah they don't it's a lot of used products and worn out not that good so we're gonna walk up here to the market It actually doesn't look that busy right now, which is really cool. So probably gonna be harassed more by the vendors, so. Looks like a lot of the stands aren't set up, so maybe it's just kind of like not a busy day or anything like that. 
Oh, there's still quite a bit of uh, vendors here, which is cool. So the other little stores will have, like on the side will have uh, meats, flowers, some coffee, and there is one main grocery store right kind of in the center of it that we just passed by. And as you can see right here, a lot of the vendors are gone. These are the clothes and the accessories. Maybe you'll find some actual brand name stuff, but you know, the things I'm seeing right now just look like kind of like regular clothing, you know, nothing too special, nothing that kind of uh, catches my eye, so. Another meat shop over there. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Over here, some random things. I did see some like Nikes. Not sure if they were like knockoffs or anything like that. Kind of looked like it, but I don't know for sure. So, um, kind of show you like one or two more spots that are around me, which is very convenient. Over here, we're gonna be kind of going next to um, the kind of the local bus station. So we have kind of like, bus stations are just all local around the Belgrade area and then there's another one that will you know go to different countries different um, cities and things like that kind of the further bus rides so this is just like more of the local metro over here Usually it's more packed, you know, there will be a lot more buses waiting here, but um, these are where the local buses will be. Um, it doesn't really cost that much for a bus ride. I think it's probably about 50 to 60 cents, 95 dinar, give or take. And um, yeah, so this is just kind of like the local area over here. And, you know, you could go to the outskirts of the city and things like that. It's very useful. They also have like a little tram as well too that goes through the city you're not going to see it here you're going to see it more at the other bus station which i guess will go kind of more to the local parts but that's kind of a a little disconnected from the actual uh bus station there's also a train station that uh goes to novi sad and i think a couple of other places too and it's a speed train and usually by bus it will take um 
maybe two hours or something like the hour and a half, two hours. But if you go on this uh, speed train, it'd be like 30 or 45 minutes. So you're going to save a lot more time going on it. And I think it's about, uh, from what I was seeing, they're having a sale, it's like two and a half pounds one way, which is not bad. So you're spending, I don't know, six, seven dollars going round trip to over to Novi Sad. That's really cool. Look at that. You get a whole pizza for basically two dollars and eighty cents, two dollars fifty cents. <clears throat> One thing that's not really mentioned here too much is um, there's a lot of graffiti. So Basically every building, bus thing you're going to see is going to have graffiti all over it. Not too much of a fan of graffiti. Um, I think it's cool. I, I do think it's like beautiful and stuff like that. But also, you know, you're kind of ruining buildings and stuff. I don't like that part as well. But look at this. Yeah, all along here, you're going to see like a bunch. And it's pretty funny because um, sometimes you'll see a lot of, uh, <laughs> you'll see kind of this Antifa and like, I don't know, maybe white supremacists, like alt-right, like um, graffiti. And, and they basically scribble over each other. So there's this like little graffiti war you see where basically the, both sides, this this far left and far right group are just like fighting over spots to like tag and stuff. So it's just kind of humorous just walking around and see these guys just, they're probably teenagers or you know, young people just like brawling over the walls and just like tagging it up. And so, so it's really funny to see that. So right there, there's these like little kiosks that have, you know, candy, cigarette, food. Those are gonna be kind of like more your 7-Eleven type things. I heard that these places uh, can give you bus passes. I, I'm not 100% sure. I asked some places, they say they do, some other places that they don't. Basically, it's kind of like your 7-Eleven over here. But um, right next to us over here is going to be your, um, bus station over here. You see, bus over there. And those are gonna go to different uh, countries and different areas uh, within the country. And um, yeah, you could go over north, over to Hungary, to Budapest. You can go you know, south to Macedonia. I don't think they go to Kosovo. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, so if I'm wrong, please tell me. But Serbia does not recognize Kosovo. They're pretty bitter of what happened with NATO and everything else. So it's just kind of a thing, you know, we don't talk about, they don't recognize it. I'm trying to figure out how to get into it and come back and be fine. I heard it can be pretty tricky, but I do just kind of want to go see it because it is historical. Um, I heard there's not really a lot to do there, but I think I could kind of dig up some cool interesting things But you know, there's a lot to see in this country like people don't realize that like it's not just Belgrade There's a lot of fortresses. There's a lot of cities. And there's a lot of cool places historical places that you can go check out so um, I'm gonna walk over to um, a Certain part of the uh, city over here and this part is kind of becoming the new industrialized uh, area. Um, a lot of investment is going into this certain spot and I just realized I kind of went in an awkward place. So I need to cross the street over this bridge over here. But along the riverside, there's a lot of investment going on. So I'm gonna show you right here, all these newer buildings are being built. A lot of people don't know there's a lot of tourism happening. And unfortunately, 
with what's happening in Ukraine, you know, when you do tourism, let's just say over to like Thailand, or if you do tourism to just a country that has a cheaper economy than you have, then, you know, you weren't going to travel over there. Of course, Thailand and Vietnam are big ones because it's very cheap and there's a lot of beaches and stuff. But this is a nice close area, too, for a lot of Europeans, you know, from the EU or the people who are on um, the Euro to come down over here. You get a beer for, I don't know, a dollar, dollar fifty cents. Um, you can uh, have warm weather over here. You could be along the uh, riverside. You could go out on a boat. A lot of cool things to check out so a lot of people from Europe and even America come over here I would say not as much as America because we don't really talk about it too much in America and that's kind of why I'm doing right now is bring, shedding some light over on this country so I'm gonna show you kind of more of this boardwalk that they're uh, building I know in my last video I did a little bit of it but I just want to show you that this is a great place to go it's cheap it's amazing. The people here are very friendly. It's an awesome place to go. So. So again, you can kind of see that we're, uh, they're doing some investing over here, which is really cool. And another thing I forgot to point out as well is that most of the younger generation speaks English here. So you really don't even need to learn the language necessarily. It could help, you know, just some general conversation and stuff like that, but you don't need to learn the conversation or learn the language. It's fine. So that's what another thing that, you know, makes a lot of Americans or Westerners like hesitant of going to different countries because they can't speak the language and they think it's going to be a hard time to get around but it's actually quite the opposite you just people are very friendly here if you have any questions you're going to get the answer it's no problem again the older generation it's going to be a little bit more difficult than the mid to younger generation so yeah I don't have a problem at all it's pretty easy Here's kind of another main store right here, Shop and Go. Basically, same kind of store. Um, I think they don't have as much of um, produce and meat uh, in that store. I don't usually go to that one, so I don't know, but I noticed that the uh, availability is not as big as Idea, and there's bigger Idea stores and bigger shop and go stores. It kind of depends on the size and basically what the uh, what the property can hold. So I think depending on the size of what they can get is dependent on what they could bring into the store. So that's just my analysis. Again, I could be wrong. So, but yeah, this this new area right here, all these condos. And all this construction makes me very happy because the economy is growing. A lot of more people are coming. And God, I've been thinking about like getting in into some real estate here just because of how fast the prices are going up, how many more people are coming over here and stuff. And yeah, it's kind of crazy. And you know, with, with Ukraine, uh, I was mentioning before, with a conflict, you're gonna have more people coming over here because it is um, a cheaper country. And this is kind of like the next, uh, alternative to Ukraine. So uh, a lot of people are really excited to see what is going to be uh, coming when it comes to tourism, stuff like that. I guess it's kind of a dark way to look at it because I don't want to downplay what's happening with Ukraine and stuff like that. But from their perspective, they're happy to see that more tourism and more people are going to be coming over here. So.
so basically, you know, that's it. I'm just kind of walking around, just kind of showing places and stuff like that. But I am going to head home and do a few things. And I'm going to be planning my new trips. I'm going to be going to Sofia here um, in about a week, which is going to be really fun. Check out Bulgaria. Um, I am planning on going to Hungary here pretty soon as well. And I will be going to Novi Sad. I'm going to check out that new train. I'm going to check out um, a fortress. Uh, I can't think of the name on the top of my head, but the one that was recommended in my comments in the last video. And um, yeah, also, if anybody wants to join me, I am completely open for it. So if there's any Serbian that wants to tag along, show me some cool things or any other um, expats, explorers that are around the area, I'm totally open for it. So feel free to send me an email and we can make it happen. So thanks for watching. I will see you guys next time. Have a good one.